This demo is about the draping simulation feature. For any ply or core in the laminate list, you can add it to the draping simulation feature, viewing the shear results, and getting a preview of the ply's flat pattern. By default, we are scaling the results to the one and limit angle. You can switch that to max and min. And besides the shear, we are also providing the longitudinal and transverse orientations and the draped ply thickness. If you've selected only one object, as I just did, and add it to the list, it creates a new set with that ply selected. And because that set is active, it will calculate the drape result immediately. You can add a new set and pick another object. Or you can, let's cancel, pick multiple objects, and then go to draping simulation. With multiple added, you will see that none of them is singly selected, so no preview is calculated yet. A pause symbol is indicated for each set that is not yet calculated. So activating ply one or set one in this case, you'll see that the other sets are still not calculated and on preview. If I now accept the feature, the other two sets still need to be calculated but set one and four are done and will be skipped, speeding up the regeneration. Once the draping simulation feature is created, the results are shown in a traffic light format in the drape status column if you activate the draping manager. A green icon indicates that the shear result is below the warning angle. Yellow indicates the results are between the warning and limit angle. And a red indicates that shear is above the limit angle. In your material file, you have the warning and limit angles. You can change those to any preferred value. Changing these will update the traffic light response. We can click the feature and redefine. We can also just click on it from the ribbon. If a feature is already existing, then this selection will trigger a redefinition as there can only be one draping simulation feature in your design. The seat point can be moved by picking the yellow dot and dragging it, or by simply picking in the area of the ply. So if we do this for the little one here, I can pick anywhere within the ply but I cannot select outside of the ply area. In case your ply is hidden from the graphics display, as you see here, you cannot pick a different seat point because it doesn't see the ply's geometry. However, you can still drag the seat point any way you want. From the draping manager, you can also look at the results without redefinition. You can look at the results and that preview will remain active as long as you are in the draping manager and have not clicked elsewhere. If I now click in the background, it cancels it and I can launch it again. By default, we are draping selected plies and cores 
with the knowledge of their context. Meaning that there's an option called drape over underlying plies and every ply and core in the stack up will understand the plies that come before it or under it. To better show you that example, let's switch over to another simpler part. In here, we have two plies and a core. And the th last ply is draping over these three objects. And as you can see, this green ply understands that it is actually draping over this red ply and over the core. Now, in this example, obviously, the, the size is a bit exaggerated to make a clear image and show you that this ply is actually stepping over that core. If we unselect drape over underlying plies, then the ply completely ignores its context and thinks it's the only one in the list. As mentioned by default, this option is on, as we think it provides a more accurate result. With that explained, let's go back to the other part. So in this example, I've already created the draping simulation feature for all of these plies in the list. And as you see, we have different results in shear. We have a variety of icons. And there is actually two different ones here. In case the shear is above 80 degrees, we no longer try to display it. And we label this ply as failing the draping simulation. If we now select these two plies and activate the draping simulation, you will see down here that they are selected. Without having to scroll through a maybe even much longer list, we have some additional filtering controls here. We can filter this list down to select it, and it will show the two that I just selected. This is especially useful if the ones that you have selected are spread out through the list. One may be at the top, one at the bottom, then you can filter like this. And what we need to do in this case, we just need to actually adjust the seat point. So for this ply, let's put the seat point somewhere here. And it can find the result and do something similar for this ply. So we can now filter back to text and get the complete list. At any time, if you have changed the seat point, you can come here and remove the selected seat point, and it will take the default center of area. You can also lock your seat point to a datum point if I lock my seat point to that datum point, then when the datum point gets moved on regeneration, the seat point will follow along. While if I pick, let's say, somewhere close to that datum point, it is now locked to the UV coordinates of the surface and not to the datum point. So there is a difference in regeneration response, and we offer you flexibility to use either. Additional controls are available in the step length, draping offset, and simplification angle. The step length determines the resolution of the draping simulation. And you can change the draping direction by applying a draping angle offset to the ply roll direction. And the simplification angle controls if and to what extent flat pattern polyline segments are merged.
And as you can now see, we updated the seed point for those two flies. And they are now reporting a correct result. We also offer to view or export the draping summary, providing you all the details of the results for each ply or core in the draping simulation feature. Thank you.